So next point, because we didn't have a lot of questions. <laughs> um, okay, next point, I'm gonna cover a hot take. Now I've been putting a lot of these hot takes onto Twitter. Um, and so the Facebook group might not be seeing them as much, but I wanna cover them because they're very important. And I'm using them on Twitter to drive conversation and understand it, and then we can cover those conversations here in these weekly lives. So the hot take, and this is one that has just gotten, uh, every time I post something about this, it gets like days and days and days of conversations from all sorts of different people. So hot take, CPMs and CPCs are garbage metrics for old thinking. Who gives a fuck about what the inventory or the traffic costs? In an OCPM world, which with Facebook is an optimized CPM world, none of this really matters. It's all about conversion rate and machine learning. What is your winning bid and, 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 and test what matters. And, and so I want to get into this. So first off, the premise of the point is that CPMs and CPCs are ancient thinking. You don't need to worry about them. Now, people immediately come back and they'll say, and I've got threads and threads and threads of these, like, well, you know, well, CPMs are good. Like, I'm going to do great. Like, my results would be phenomenal if I like, could just lower my CPM. And you know what? That'd be, that'd be true. But your conversion rates and your click-through rates and your CPCs and all of these other variables would be different if your CPMs would be lower. Um, you know, I, I saw people bragging about the internet, although nobody was able to send me a screenshot with any context about how, like, hey, I was getting $3 CPMs. Like, great. What was your CPA? One day click. What was your CPA? Was it better? Hopefully it was. Is that consistent? Are you going to be able to make business decisions around that level of performance? Because if you're not, then it doesn't really matter. It's just a nice talking point. And my point to that is, like, we do use... CPMs and CPCs as a proxy for success when we're trying to explain things after the fact. But if you try to spend all of your money where you're getting really low CPMs, it doesn't mean that you're going to get really good CPAs, cost per acquisition. You're not going to get a good you know, cost per result just because the inventory is low. When the inventory is low cost, it means that you're able to reach a ton of people. But it doesn't mean that the quality of those people are any good. Generally speaking, Facebook will charge you less for lower quality inventory. And Facebook will charge you more for higher quality inventory. Right? That just makes sense. If something is good, it costs more than if something is bad. So on top of that, we also have to understand the impact that has on the whole funnel. So let's say, look, we're getting five, we're getting $3 CPMs and we're just, you know, let's say Charlie's getting a $15 CPMs and so-and-so is getting a $3 CPM. So-and-so is getting five more people to see an ad with every dollar that we spend. Great. My next question is then, what are your CPCs? Are they five times cheaper? Are you getting traffic to your store five times cheaper? And on, point, on top of that, is your click-through rate Level, like if I'm getting a 1% click-through rate on a $15 CPM and a $1 CPC, are you getting a $3 CPM with a third, with a 20% CPC and are still maintaining a 1% click-through rate? We can do the math, but I can already tell you the answer is no. And why that's important is because all these metrics play together into some very, very large um, algebra, right? So we have a ton of variables. And then you're going to say, well, look, the real thing that matters is my click-through rate. Like, look, if I can get one out of five people that sees my ad to click, I'm great. Okay, let me challenge that. One out of five people that click, that sees your ad is great. Awesome. What's your CPM? How much does that inventory cost? Is it $3 or is it $100? Out of the people that click, how many of them are likely to convert? Is it one out of five people? Is it one of a thousand people? Like you might have a really high click-through rate, but no conversions because you're like, hey, do you want to test drive this Lamborghini for free? I'll drive to your house and then just take you out and give you 50 bucks. Well, fuck yeah, I'll click on that. 
I'm not. I'm, re- I'm never gonna buy the fucking Lamborghini, but I'm gonna get a shit ton of clicks with a really high click through rate. Or, or maybe I've got a great offer, but it's only getting a really great click through rate on my super low retargeting audience. So I'm able to reach 100 people a day, like a 50% click through rate. Can I spend a a hundred bucks a day on that audience? A thousand? Can I spend ten thousand against that audience? The answer is probably no. So my point is, anywhere where you're seeing these extreme hyperbolic results where you are so far out of what is normal odds are when one thing gets really fucking good something else gets really fucking bad because we have an optimized cpm ecosystem and that optimized cpm is is the buzzword for it but let me describe to you what that really means an optimized cpm means that it is taking in all of these elements and then charging you for the impression based on your ultimate business objective. Now, why do I say that all of this is garbage metrics for old thinking? It's because we're not bidding on clicks. We're not bidding on impressions. We're not bidding on click through rates. We're not bidding on conversion rates. We're not bidding on engagement. Well, maybe we're bidding on engagements, but we're not bidding on any of these metrics. What we're bidding on is conversions. So the optimized CPM is going to give us the best cost conversion if we're running low cost. Say we're running a conversion campaign at lowest cost. The only thing that matters is what is the cost of that conversion? I have easily seen $50, $100 CPMs that are driving me a $20 conversion and then $15 CPMs that are giving me a $50 conversion because the quality of that traffic is better because it's not just the CPM, it's also the CPC, it's also the conversion rate, it's also it's also the click-through rate, it's also the frequency against that audience. It's so many different matters. That it doesn't really help you in the bottom line to hyper-focus on one element of that algebra problem, right? I mean, we know that our primary focus in anything is to, is to take a primary, or like, we don't know, it. Let me let me give you some advice. If you want to improve your business, find the one thing that you need to do better at and focus your results on getting better at that. And now I preach all the time, the one thing that you should be worrying about is your one day post click CPA. If you are running a conversion campaign to drive sales and you are bidding on conversions, whether it's lowest cost or cost cap or you know bid cap or whatever it happens to be, the only thing that matters is how much does it cost to get me to get somebody to click on my ad today and buy? Now you get a whole bunch of people that say, well, I've got a 28 day sales cycle and I've got all this other stuff and that might be true, but we don't give a shit. Hi Cheryl. We don't, we don't give a fuck about any of that because I'm only caring about who's going to buy today. Who do I spend money on today? And who am I going to sell today? Now, maybe you have all these things and, and that's fine. Because it's not that saying that only people that click today are worthwhile. What it means is that is the base unit of measurement that has the most amount of insight and is the easiest to adjust. And if we know, say we get a 0.5 one day post click and that gets us to a 3x after our 28 day whatever, right? If our performance goal is to get to a 3.5, the number one way of making that better is by taking that 0.5 ROAS on, on the one day post click and making it a 0.7. If you can improve that by 40, what was effectively 40%, your 28 day is going to improve massively because it all starts with the quality of traffic that you're sending through your system, which gets to a larger piece. But if you drive more, say you have a store, right? And now you've got a really great fucking billboard and everybody's coming in because you're giving fucking test drives or Lamborghinis for free and you're driving to people's houses and you give them a hundred bucks. Well, you're going to get a shit ton of people, but none of them are going to fucking buy. What that also means is that your entire ecosystem is struggling because you're not able to make any sale because there's all of these people, not only in prospecting, they're doing really good at driving people to, to, you know, come and take the test drive, but also while you're retargeting is going, is spending money on all these people that don't give a fuck about actually spending money on you. So now not only is your prospecting driving, you're getting a shit ton of impressions that are really gaming some metric that doesn't actually lead to revenue. So you're wasting money, but now all of your downstream efforts are also impacted. Like your email channel has a shit ton of leads that are completely fucking useless. Your call center has to deal with a whole bunch of people that are never going to buy from you. So they're wasting your fucking time and costing you money. 
you're likely to maybe spend some money and, and you probably get more chargebacks, right? Because like the people that aren't actually interested, they're just trying to get the whatever the thing is, right? So when you have garbage customers coming in your door, you're gonna have garbage customers for the rest of that sales cycle. So my point is, if you focus on just getting the sale from the people today, you're likely to see better results downstream. Now, maybe you've got a 28 day sales cycle or you've got something that some great math that I honestly don't trust at all with most of these things because I've been able to prove them wrong, but say that is the case, right? People don't buy on the first click, that's fine. Your prospecting ad is doing retargeting all the time. Unless you've got that audience excluded, in which case they're inside a retargeting audience. And then you'll say people, well, you know, my, my, my prospecting takes like a week to get somebody to convert or like it takes 27 days because I've noticed that like the, the, the lift in the uh, delayed attribution is actually this thing. And it, it really doesn't mean fucking anything. That's a nice story to tell somebody. But where got the click today? And I'll guarantee you, if you didn't exclude your retargeting audience from your prospecting, your prospecting audience would have a much shorter conversion time and you would it reach that maturation on that convert that delayed attribution bullshit would be much tighter because you're saying that if somebody doesn't buy right away you are allowed to touch them more than once you're allowed to show them impressions more than once um the purpose of your prospecting campaign is not to get people to fuck you because you introduce yourself at their doorstep the purpose of that is to reach new people to try to sell your product to as a matter of scale for your business. Retargeting is saying these people already know who I am. And I'm going to try to get them as well. And you should really only be having audiences that are complementary. Now, where does this all get back to CPMs and CPCs? The actual bid, the actual cost for you to make that sale is the only thing that you really give a fuck about. Now, maybe you've got a bunch of different products and they're selling all over the place, in which case ROAS is really important, but I guarantee you, if you want a good ROAS, you sell a product for cheaper, it's probably gonna be better. Or you sell for a higher AOV and that's gonna be better as well. There are multiple pieces, but let's just go on a static conversation for the purpose of this, con the purpose of this lesson being as strong as we can. If you want to get more efficient, the way you do that is by lowering your cost per sale. Your cost per sale is not lowered because you get a better click through rate. It's not lowered because you get a better CPC. It's not lowered because you get a better CPM. It's not lowered because you get a better conversion rate even. Yes, conversion rate is important. Yes, CPCs are important. CPMs are important. And I started this off by saying it's all about conversion rate and machine learning. And here's what I mean by that. Is you want to get quality people in and you want to be able to convert them. So it's about how good is the machine at understanding your business objective and improving the conversion rate amongst the people that you're bringing in so that it understands who better to go out to. Because if it understands who's likely to have a higher conversion rate, it's not about the people that are have a conversion rate that are already inside of your ecosystem. It's about the conversion rate of the people that you're going to reach inside of prospecting. I'll gladly if my conversion rate on that customer, if one out of 100 people that I reach is gonna buy, I'll gladly pay 10 times more than if it's one out of 2,000. And the majority of us are probably getting at best one out of 1,000, one out of two, one out of 3,000 people that we show an ad to actually purchase. So my point here is CPMs, CPCs, CTRs, all of these fancy metrics that don't actually impact what we're bidding on, that don't actually have an impact on what we can control are useless. They're great for telling stories and it's great to dissect why things may have worked or why things haven't to work. And if you're at the point where you're doing this like post-mortem to try to understand something, it means you've already won or you've already lost, in which case I don't really give a shit. It's a nice sound bite that you put maybe on some PowerPoint deck so you can show somebody why it was a good idea to drive you because you're smart. I don't give a fuck about that because the amount of time I'm spending trying to sound smart to some fucking strangers, the amount of time I'm not spending trying to win today. Now, it depends on your client relations. Some people that I've worked with really despise that because they want to understand everything's going on. Other business owners are like, great. I don't want to spend an hour having you show me a whole bunch of information. Most clients 
don't really want to deal with like giant long decks and great presentations and all things. Maybe they want like a quarterly business review because that's worth the time. But I'd much rather under, I'd much rather have a conversation that's 15 minutes long about how you're going to make me more money today than an hour long conversation about how you lost money last week. Because I don't give a fuck about that. And neither does your business owner. So what is actually important? What is actually important is the thing that you can control. What can you actually control is whatever item you're bidding on. If it's a conversion campaign and you're bidding on conversions and you're bidding lowest cost conversion, then the only thing that you can actually control is the cost of your conversions. And that's going to happen based on a bunch of variables around CPM, around CPC, CTR, all of these wonderful things are all combining to understand what your bid in the ecosystem is. So what is more important, I, I'm glad Cheryl says, I do what you say and I'm winning. I'm glad Cheryl, that's, that's awesome. I was on the Slack call earlier today with a couple of people that were also doing great. I, I, I'm not gonna fucking tout some things, but like fucking people are doing well. My point is at the end of the day, only worry, and this doesn't just go for Facebook ads or anything else, only worry about the shit you can control. You can't increase your click-through rate and control, like, you're only going to be able to really adjust one variable because it's a test. If you adjust multiple variables, you don't know why something worked or why something didn't work because you've made multiple variables. If the thing works, okay, well, which variable lends itself to creating that success? Well, I don't know. I changed three things. Okay, well, great. Now undo all of it and try each one of those things. Well, now you just wasted a fucking month and it might have been anomalous to begin with. So now you've wasted two months. So to get back to what's, what I'm getting at here, CPA is really the only thing that fucking matters. And if you drive better CPAs, if your campaign is a conversion campaign at lowest cost, the number one objective is to try to get a lower cost conversion today than you had yesterday. Make next month's conversion cheaper than last month's conversion. That's the only thing that really fucking matters. Everything else is a facet of how your site's going, what your offers, all of these other things are important. But the only thing you can control is the thing that you're bidding on. And the thing that you're bidding on should be the number one business objective of import to you. And I'm gonna keep going, talking in circles here, but I'll finish with like a sound bite and hopefully we can move on to something else. If you're trying to sell a product and you're bidding on a conversion and you are bidding optimizing towards a sale, a purchase, the only way you're going to improve is to get more purchases for each dollar that you spend. The only way that's going to happen is by controlling how much it costs to make a sale. Everything else is some output of some variable in a very elaborate algebra equation. And you can either try to fix every single variable, which you're not gonna be able to track, which you're not gonna be able to control for, which you're not gonna be able to isolate, test and measure and improve, which means ultimately you're never gonna actually be able to get any good work done other than sounding smart. Or you focus on the output. I'm gonna get an ad that does better than the last ad did and drives me consistent results over time in a stable fashion that helps me get more efficient. And if I can do that, all those other metrics will get better. Here's the thing. If you can improve your one day post click CPA, everything else gets better because it's the unit rate of measurement inside of the ecosystem. That is the language that the machine uses to understand what's going on. And if you can get better at that, your prospecting will be more efficient because the machine will understand better what your objectives are and will go after people that are better matched to a positive result. And if it's better at finding strangers, well, their click-through rate is going to be better. And if people are more likely to positively respond to your messaging, well, your CPM is going to go up. 
And if you have people that are more likely to respond to your messaging and the inventory is cheaper, well, you're probably going to get a better click-through rate, right? And you're going to get a better CPC. And, and, and everything else is going to cascade off of it because you started what actually fucking matters and the only thing you can control. Instead of chasing some downstream metric that doesn't really fucking mean anything and is more of an output than anything you can control. Anyway, there we go. Hot take. CPCs and CPMs, garbage metrics uh, for old thinking. And the reason that it exists is because the people that define what best practices are, when we started advertising, when I started eight years ago, um, nine years ago, um, and, and still today, the head thinkers, right? All these big people that are in great positions of power, the majority of them either came up in Google search or television or radio, or they learned from people who did. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. They can be as good as 80% of the advertisers on Facebook. If I'm as good as only 80%, I'm losing. And I don't want you to lose either. They can chase your coattails and spend far more time and effort doing a whole bunch of shit that's not really going to make a difference. Maybe it does because they focused on one variable so well that they backed into something that's good. But if you focus on the one thing that you can actually change and you don't worry about other shit, you're gonna work less. You're gonna be more efficient. Honestly, you're gonna be less stressed out. And you're gonna win easier and more effectively than they will. And I'll put dollars to donuts on that every single fucking time. Every single fucking time. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. Uh, I want to get into the homework for this week, and then we'll get into the last piece. Um, here we go. Ba, ba, ba. Okay. <sighs> Try to start all these things at the top of the minute. So when I do the notes, it all lines up. Ba, 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 ba. Okay. So the homework for this week. And we already said, if you want one of the eBooks, you can just get it by asking. And I, I know that I owe it to a couple people that did it over the weekend, over the like New Year's. And, and I'm going to get those out today, I promise. Um, we've been talking a lot about all of this stuff. So the homework for this week is I would like for you to be able to show me that you can understand how to look at cost per purchase or cost per whatever your target result is on a one day click. Send me a screenshot of that. Tell me how you're going to do it. However you want to represent that. And I don't need to see these big screenshots of ads or whatever. I mean, you can literally just go to like comparing windows and you can set up your uh, a screenshot of how your columns are set up. Website purchases, comparing windows, default in one day. I mean, I literally just told you how to do it. Do that. Send it to me so that you can understand how to look at this information, how to evaluate things properly. And uh, I'll send you any of the ebooks from uh, facebookdisruptor.com that you want, or give you 50% off membership um, into the community. Because that's what it's all about. I want you to win. Um, and I really hope that if we can make this a simple effort that we can all work together on, then um, we're going to win.